Hey everybody, welcome to Real Brave Live, episode 52, is it? Yep. That sounds right. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 songs every guitar should know according to Ultimate Guitar. We'll talk about Ultimate Guitar in a second. Because, this is very important now, these are songs taught in a lesson room. Because Deep Purple single, Smoke in the Water, was released, according to my research, May 26th, 1973. So almost 50 years ago today. And uh, we're going to talk about these songs over the next who knows how long. If you didn't know this already, Real Brave is a music studio. And we have an online classroom, virtual classroom, where you can get lessons. You can sign up, get live lessons with your instructor, like from like that guy over there. And we built this portal so that you can learn any instrument, pretty much, uh, on our, our portal. It's called Practice Pad, and we're very excited about it. Hundreds, if not thousands of people are using it. And uh, let me tell you something, if you really want to learn an instrument, this is probably the closest thing you can get to an online, in-person experience. It's called Practice Pad, practice-pad.com. You can sign up today. Uh, every week at Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern-ish, we do this two musicians in a room talking about music, the history of music, top 10 list, you name it, so that you, viewer, can have a good time and laugh at me. Uh, smash that like button, that reminder button, so that you can get reminded every single week when we do this, because we're gonna talk about the top 10 songs every guitar should know here on Real Brave Live. Thank you, Kevin. How are you today? Oh, I'm, I'm so good. Thanks for asking. Thanks Hi. for wearing my, uh, some white pants. Yep. I like it. Uh, look, it's got a little like, my, uh, Miami Vice going well, we're, we're getting We're getting more towards summer, so you know I'm going to yeah. make use of it before Labor Day. Yeah, you so, don't want to wear white pants after Labor Day. I mean, I will in, in a, uh, a defiance of the cultural norms and milieus. But, yeah. Uh, You're going to get a perm, too? I will. Good. So... <laughs> Top 10 songs every guitarist should know, yeah. according to Ultimate Guitar. You use Ultimate Guitar. What is Ultimate Guitar? Uh, Ultimate Guitar is a website um, that houses uh, peer-created tablature. Um, what is tablature? Tablature is a, like a musical shorthand for how to like, read music for specifically stringed instruments that have frets. Okay. Guitar. It's like a whole other language outside of music theory. Uh, e yeah, and um, a lot of students, especially guitar, but this you know goes beyond that to bass, ukulele, mandolin even, mandolin even I've seen tabulature for, or tabs for short. Um, it, it's there's a reason why we use it, um, and it's the the main reason is that I can play the same thing here that I can play here, that I can play here, that I can play here, or, or, or pretty close, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, et cetera. Uh, so at any given moment, for any line on, of music, mm -hmm. I can have so many different options to play. It can be overwhelming a lot of times and not always intuitive. So there's this, um, uh, there's this shorthand, we'll call it. I like that. That's of, good. Of how to play the music. It, it relates to the music the same way in the dictionary. And I'm stealing this right from Adam Neely, um, who's a uh, music theorist. He's got a U YouTube channel. But the it, famous Ad Adam Neely. The, that one. That guy. That, Everybody knows him. Yeah. Um, actually, he's got a really good channel. Um, it relates to music the same way in the dictionary, the phonetic pronunciation of the word relates to the word itself. It'll tell you how to say the word, okay. but it won't give you any other information beyond that. Like, it won't give you context. You're talking about tablature, though. Yeah, yeah. It, the tablature won't really give you like a, like a context in terms of like pitch or rhythm. Some, uh, some try. Some try, yeah, yeah. you see like some of the rhythmic notation underneath of it, but it's largely, and especially on Ultimate Guitar, where it's text-based and not like um, computer-generated, well, it's largely devoid of that. So, so tablature is it's a really ch uh, it's a quick shorthand of learning music. It's very popular. Ultimate Guitar on these types of sites are very popular for learning uh, guitar because it kind of gives you like a a uh, shorthand. I love that word mm -hmm. on how to learn some of these songs. Now, not all of them are are correct, <laughs> so you got to be careful with what you what you're picking. Yeah. But I 
on purpose picked this um, this list from Ultimate Guitar because it is a hot button of, of conversation about like which is a good you know version of which song. Right. Um, Smoke in the Water was was re released according to my research on Google mm -hmm. on May 26, 1973, and this list is based on user voting from UltimateGuitar.com. I'm assuming that that Smoke in the Water is going to be on the list, this list somewhere. So let's discuss it. Probably somewhere. These are the top 10 songs every guitar should know. Number 20, uh, Pink Floyd, Comfortably Numb. Yep. Really quick, because we want to get through uh, 20 through 11 really quick. Yeah, yeah. Just, if there's a, a couple, there's one YouTube video where there's a young man watching this solo. Or it might be a young woman, actually, who watching this solo. She's never heard Pink Floyd before, but as soon as that solo comes up, it's one of the most famous solos of all, of all time. She starts crying hysterically. Mm. Yeah, arpeggios. Yeah. Number 19, Green Day, Good Riddance, Time of Your Life. I've taught this song a thousand times. Same. And so this list is less of like a must-know list for guitarists and more of a must-know list for guitar teachers. But guitar teach? Okay, yes. I didn't, I didn't know where you're going. I've taught all of these songs on this list um, at different levels of uh, complexity and, yeah. and, and, and skill. But um, it's this is like these are the for some reason these are the songs that grab the beginner student and say, "Hey, you could do this. Uh, here's how." And for I don't know why, but that's this is like the the this is, it. This is the repertoire for 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 beginning students. Number eighteen's Dire Straits, um, oh. Sultan's a Swing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the timeless classic. I heard you did that with uh, Mike Kennedy. Here, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah, he he killed that. He did the whole. Uh, uh, Talk about arpeggios. There it is. Yeah. Uh, number 17, uh, Chuck Berry, Johnny B. Good. Uh, ah, yeah, good. One. There it is. Come on. Rip it. Yeah. That song is probably, what, 60 years old? 70 years old? 70, at least. Yeah, at least 70 years old. Yeah, it's one of the. These are all, um, you know, I've taught these, but these are all amongst the first songs that I've learned. Maybe yeah. not that wasn't too close to the top. Is Johnny guess. Be Good the one, I think that's the, the song that's on the Voyager um, satellite that's out, that just reached outside of the universe? Is it really? Out of this galaxy? Is it really? I'm, I'm, fact check. I'm pretty sure it's, that's one of the songs that's on there. Um, so whoever, whatever alien comes to eat us, they're going to hear Johnny Be Good and be like, oh, maybe we there's maybe the we There's the them. Vesuvian Man on there. Yeah. There's uh, a Venetian. No, it's the Vesuvian. Vesuvian. Um, the Venetian man is just a guy eating in in, uh, in, in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I forget what the song is. I I I guess it's Johnny B. Four Good. Seasons. Um, Vivaldi. But yeah, that's just your standard twelve bar blues. Is also in Back to the Future. Obviously, maybe you're not ready for that, but your kids are gonna love it. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Number sixteen, Metallica, Enter Sandman. Uh huh. Bum. Yeah, so great. First time I heard that, I was like, wow. Metal is now mainstream. That's so weird. Um, number 15, Oasis, Wonderwall. I hate this song. Can't stand it. Is that it? Yeah, just can't. Please. Number 14, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Under the Bridge. This reminds me of my high school days. Oh, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny B. Good was on the Voyager, I think. Look at that. I knew something. There you go. I'm a space geek. Number 13, Ozzy Osbourne, Crazy Train. Oh, yeah. This is this what we're working on. I'm working on this with uh, Mike right now. So good. I like this one. I love that. I didn't realize he did that until you showed. Up. I thought it was a whammy bar thing. I thought it was like a, like a, uh, like this. That's what I thought it was. But it's just a bend and a tap. I love that. Oh my god, that yeah. that 
makes the hairs on someone's arms go somewhere. Okay. Sure. Um, number 12, Gary Moore, Over the Hills and Far Away. Mm -hmm. What? Gary who? Gary Moore. Gary Less. We listen, we listen to this and it, it can't, that cannot be right. Uh, I think it's Led Zeppelin's Over the Hills and Far Away. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, by the way, my, my daughters are picking up old school like yes. rock t-shirts, yes. Led Zeppelin and all that stuff. Oh, just the t-shirts? Just the t-shirts. Oh, okay. And I was like, we need to fix the fact that you don't know who these bands are. Right. So we've been doing, our, we've been uh, buying records. We've been going over here to Pompton and oh, okay, cool. buying some records and they, they're really getting into it. Is that the place that's by, um, there's like a Mexican food store next door. I forget there's what it's called. The there's two. There there's are one two. in the train. There's one in the train and then there's the flip side. Yeah. Yeah. That place is interesting. It's like a hole in the wall, but there's so much yes. in there. I asked him to come here. He said no. Really? <laughs> okay, we'll go into that later. Ask me that again. Bummer. Uh, number 11, the Ramones Blitzkrieg Bop. Aye. Oh. This was famously done by um, the Real Brave uh, Ambassador Famous. Band. Yeah. Um, at Bitter, bitter at End. Bitter End. Um, uh, Emma crushed it. Emma, Emma killed that she one. Did. She really did. Everyone was very impressed with her and every, everybody else. It's a great song to learn if you're beginning guitar because it's literally three things. It's this, this, and this, and there's... One, four, five. Uh, one, four, and five, and then there's one, two in there. Yeah. But that's it. That's the entire song. Yeah. Uh, so if you can make this shape on the guitar, which is a power chord, uh, and if you're looking at it in tabulature, you see a five and a seven above it. That's what that means. Fifth fret on the E string, seventh fret on the A string. That's, yeah. you're, you're well on your way. Uh, side note about the Ambassador Band, they'll be here in Oakland this, not this Saturday, but Sat Friday, June 10th, and Saturday, June 11th, uh, at the Oakland Pil Public Library, uh, debuting a new set of music um, as part of the Bergen County Arts Amble. You're excited. You're very excited, but we're ex more excited than yes. you are. Yeah. So that's uh, 20 through 11. Now the top 10. Oh, we just f flew through that. But yeah. seriously, number 12 is not Gary Moore. It can't be. Uh, no, it's not. There's no we way. Listen to that, and it's definitely a typo. Okay. Uh, number t uh, so number 10, killing in the name of uh, Rage Against the Machine. Uh, Something like that, right? Something like that. Uh, released on the band's 1992, according to this is again ultimateguitar.com. Mm -hmm. Released on the band's 1992 self-titled debut album. Um, practicing, practicing this song will get you working on killer chops and proper dynamics. Saw, killer chops. I saw a funny That's thing. Such a musician thing. I saw a funny thing about. Um, uh, somebody had posted that they, you know, they were they were like a fan like back in the day of the band. And then um, uh, recently, they're like, you know what? I feel like Rage Against the Machine, they, they just got too political. And it's God. like, what machine did you think they were raging against <laughs> this whole time? Got too political. The whole thing was in, on purpose. Yeah, um, Yeah, it's a really strong guitar uh, riff, but the, the lyrics and the way um, that, it's, that that song is sung it became the defining sound for that band. Mm -hmm. Tom Morello is a great guitarist. Oh, he is, He's yeah. the one that, that uh, played that riff, and he said that he wrote the signature riff while teaching a guitar student about drop D tuning. Oh, it's in D I've, then. I've never uh, do drop D tuning. I rarely do drop D tuning unless it's. Uh. That's a drop D tune. So is uh, Never Long, I've learned. Yes. Yeah, whatever it is. So yeah, uh, number ten, killing in the name of, killing in the name of. Yeah. So he was teaching his guitar student, and he wrote a song. That's crazy. I don't yeah. know if I've ever done that. I'm. Uh, that, not, that might not be true. Number nine, Sweet Child of Mine, Guns N' Roses, your favorite. Uh. <laughs> another one we've done on stage yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did we get muted? Yeah. Maybe. Slash, the guitarist, is undoubtedly one of the most well-known guitarists of hard rock, according to Ultimate Guitar. And the 
that uh, the musician made history with riffs and solos that are still anthems for fans of the genre. The song begins with a great finger exercise that's highly satisfying to play and contains jangly open chord section, a choice of power chords, cor a choice of power chord chorus, or an alternate finger exercise depending on what you, whether you uh, take rhythm or lead. Some nice slow melodic solos in the beginning verses, and a couple more advanced solos at the end. Yeah, there's the a advanced solo is hard, right? Yeah, there, there's a one two measure sixteenth wow, note run yeah. um, <laughs> that I spent hours on, and I got, eventually got it, and then I forgot it. It's Can like, you play that? Uh, That's it, slowed down like 20 times. Yeah, that's kids practice. Yeah. You gotta practice, kids. Yeah. Um, that's in the, um, you know, the, the where do we go now? It's like, where do we go? Yeah, yeah. Section. <laughs> Basically, yeah, there's, there's something in there for every standard of player. It's a song that keeps on giving as the player progresses in standard. Mm hmm. I mean, I it's, it's it's a well written tune. It's an iconic yeah. riff. That yeah, that riff is a really great exercise in finger control. One finger, one fret. Pull offs. Alternate picking is a really important thing yeah. to do there. Down, yeah. up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Yep, yep. Um, that's a uh, yeah, not economy picking. Hand position stuff. There's there's a whole thing with hand position. Whether you should stay with your fingers over the frets mm -hmm. or not. Some people say that this will give you arthritis over time. Some people say that you need to just move where you're supposed to go. I'll I'm tell a school you. of thought over, over the frets. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, one yeah. finger to one fret when possible. You will not be able to play this riff if you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, especially not. So all you bassists out there playing on the E and A string, yeah. you're never going to be able to play that song. Forget about it. <laughs> It's uh, a good bass line too, by the way. I learned um, I learned the song uh, with tablature back in the the good old days. Yeah, me too. Oh no, actually, that one I saw on a VHS tape of uh, like top ten riffs or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's been around for a while. 1980 something. Something or other. Um, some might argue that uh, Who? Paradise City is maybe more. Uh, or, so good. Or um, uh, Welcome Jun to the Jungle. I love Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah. Welcome to the Jungle. That's what I said. Mm. The Jungle. Welcome to the Journal. Welcome to the Journal. That's why I forgot your name. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, uh, Lagrange, okay. Lagrange. L Lagrange. Lagrange, uh, ZZ Top. Inspired by the... <laughs> uh, inspired by the what? Inspired by a lady's house. A name for the town where it was located, uh, Lagrange. Is Lagrange or Lagrange? Lagrange? Lagrange turned a, uh, a Houston boogie band into the biggest groups on the planet. I have a problem with the word Houston. Because <laughs> if you live in New York City, yeah. you know that there is a, an East Houston Street. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I never. So uh, down that. in the village, there's an, an East Houston Street, Houston. but it's spelled Houston. So what? I've been pronouncing. So when Melissa, my wife, moved here, and I said we have to go to East Houston Street, and she got there and she looked at the sign, she's like Houston. I'm like no. Houston, that's is the way you pronounce it. Isn't Melissa here. Melissa from like Maryland? Uh, she, uh, she's from Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Close. That's my, that's my beef with the word Houston. Yeah, Houston. What about the restaurant? The, the Houston restaurant? Yeah. You were about to say Houston's. I was. Yeah. I guess it's, yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. The English language is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> ZZ Top uh, got into some trouble over the song, though, apparently. Did you know this? They were sued by the publisher of uh, Boogie Chillin', the John Lee Hooker song, whose relentless riff had formed the basis for LeBrunch. Oh, wow. So it's John Lee Hooker. It was John Lee Hooker. Yeah. What was the what was the muddy water riff that we were? In? Yeah, that's a good question. It's something like. Uh, it was this one. Yeah. Just like the same thing. I guess. 
But I mean, this is an iconic song. I've never taught this in a class, though. Have you? I have to really? uh, Paul Thorne. So that's uh, a gentleman that's an adult. Yeah, and he performed that on the stage. Dun, 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 dun. Did he have a beard? Uh, he, and more importantly, did someone ask him to, to to cut it off for a million dollars? No, but I still get a kick out of that story. That's a crazy story. They their beards, Easy Top's beards. Do we have a picture of them? Yeah. Uh, are iconic and someone gave them wanted to give them a bunch of money to, to cut their beards off they wouldn't do it okay would you do it yeah but you were known there's a lot that i would cut off for <laughs> how much a million i think it was like it was an extraordinary amount of money at the time oh man would you cut off your fingers this no one, this one probably yeah yeah i, don't know. I mean nah no invest that million in dogecoin yeah dogecoin yeah. up to about 35 cents right now I made a couple bucks. So mad. I got in at the wrong time. I did buy Sheeb. That's a that's a meme coin. That's another meme coin. Yeah. So I bought that. It's like I've got a lot of that right now. Um, I I told you about yeah how it was like point zero 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 three cents. Yes. And I was like just joking with Mike, who's who's a big a meme guy, and I was like, I'm gonna buy this. And he's like. Don't waste your time. Yeah. And money. And I was like, <laughs> you're right. And a week later, it was like had like gone up a thousand. It's gone on a tremendous amount. Like if you had to spend a hundred dollars on that, you would be well off right now. Well off. A couple hundred thousand. Crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. yeah. So yeah, that ZZ Top tune is a well-known and simple riff that I've never taught. Number seven, Back in Black, ACDC, your favorite. I just ruined everybody's I'm going to leave you hanging there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it is an iconic riff, and i got to give credit where credit's due. It's, it's iconic in its simplicity. It's three chords, E, D, A, and then there's some pentatonic scale happening. It's just that uh, it's, it's, and it's a lot easier to play than you might uh, suppose, viewer at home. Do we have anybody watching? We, uh, I'm reading the lyrics right now. They're quite um, fantastic. <laughs> They're yeah. Back in back in the back in the back of a Cadillac. All right. Okay. We'll just leave that there. Say no more. Um, Brian Johnson, your favorite. Yep. <laughs> That's about it. That's all we got to say about this. Uh, <laughs> very satisfying and very easy to play. Definitely one of the ones that um, I think every guitar teachers taught to their students. Yeah, and you know, you can and if you're watching at home, I'm using one finger first on the A string, second fret, then on the G string, second fret, and then on the D string, second fret. If you're watching my right hand, I'm going E and A, D and G, and A and D. And that's like the the skeleton of that riff. Yeah. If I want to get a little bit more complex, then I got to know my open chords. And if I want to really get to the whole thing, I got to know my pentatonic scale and then play it backwards. I like it. Back in black, ACDC, that's number seven. Number six, Seven Nation Army. Mm -hmm. White stripes. So, playing a song with a slide. Yeah, he plays it with a slide and in a very strange tuning. I think it's like F, C, it's, it's something weird. Bizarro? It's bizarro tuning and he's play, he plays it with a slide. Um, I'm not sure if he plays the, that initial bass riff with a slide. And by the way, that's a, a bass pedal that he's got. So the White Stripes famously is just Jack White and Meg White on guitar and yes. drums, respectively. Jack uh, White uses uh, a lot of pedals to help emulate bass guitar, overdubbed onto a regular guitar. Um, I think, isn't Meg White, doesn't he have a, a restraining order? Have a restraining order against Jack White? Um, I don't know if there's a restraining order. I thought they were brothers and sif sisters. <laughs> they are not. What? Brothers and no. You said divorce. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> restraining order, Meg White. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that was right. But but Jack White is pushing back on that. Apparently he was like a weirdo. 
Who would have known? <laughs> Not me. His other ex-wife does. Jack White. No. Did Jack White marry his sister? No. What happened to Meg White? There's a really good Meg White song by um, a couple, like one artist, I forgot his name. Meg White song. I gotta find out. Oh, uh, Meg White is um, this guy. What's his name? I can never pronounce his name right. Uh, Ray, uh, Ray Le Montal. Le Montal. <laughs> Some's the worst. Some's Some the worst. Why do I even have this show? <laughs> Ray, Ray Le Montal. Okay, so yes, they were married. Le Montal. And not siblings. Thank God, because that's just that have been not for PG audience folks. No. Uh, yeah, so the 2000 and I've taught this song many a time. Um, mm -hmm. The White Stripes 2003 track Seven Nation Army is definitely one of those classy classic riffs. Classy classic riffs, uh, perfectly suited for beginners. It's very easy to play. You can do it with one finger. Yep. Tabulature would read seven, seven, ten, seven, five, three, two. Yeah. So according to um, ultimateguitar.com, uh, user Shiko pointed out playing the song without a slide beginner, playing the song with a slide using alternative tuning, intermediate. That's the intermediate? What's. I don't know. That's what this guy says. I mean, down. I would say intermediate would say, all right. right, add that power chord structure in. He's saying that with the with the alternative tuning and the and the slide. slide, there's probably no. If it's alternative tuning, it's probably just one finger and the slide. Yeah, so it's got to be tuned in just like fifths. I know Sanchez knows this because he's the one who told me this. Oh wow. Um, beyond that, I don't know much else. Good job, Sanchez. White stumbled upon the riff while warming up his hollow body guitar. You ever you ever watched uh, It Might Get Loud? No. So good. What is that? Jack, uh, Jack White, mm. The Edge, okay. and uh, Jimmy Page. All in the room oh, talking yeah, about talking. the guitar. Yeah. So good. Do your homework. Watch that. It's a very, very good movie if you like guitar and music and me. Um, so he, uh, he played the, he's warming up, played the riff, and it sounded interesting. And then uh, White plugged in in an octave pedal and wound his six string down to a low twang. Yeah, uh, that octave pedal, that's how he's getting that. It sounds like a bass guitar right in the beginning. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. But that's just a guitar through an octave pedal. Yeah, they were a two-piece. When they first came out, it was kind of like a... What? Yeah. Because you know, there was one band that, that did that um, in the 90s, the two-piecer the two uh -oh. that were famous. Famous? Famous? Oh, uh, they did Peaches. Two-piece band. Oh, that was... Oh, the President of the United States? Yeah. Two piece. I think that was President of the United States was two piece. I saw Benevento Russo duo play. That was another one. They're local guys, but now Joe Russo, he did play with the Grateful Dead, or what was left of him, and now he's got his own act called Joe Russo's Almost Dead, which I guess is a. Is that like a pun? Like an, om an homage. Daft Punk. Daft Punk. Okay. The Kills, Hurts. Jep Androids, the Black Keys. Yep, yeah. that's right. Uh, yeah. Simon and Garfunkel. No. Yes. No. They're a duo. No, but that's it's it's a duo. It's not a bassist. Excuse me, a guitarist and a drummer. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Chemical Brothers. Okay. Jeff the Brotherhood. Pet Shop Boys. Pet Shop Boys. Flight of the Concords. Yeah. You give that one. That's a that's a that's a that's a duo. There's a bass and guitar. Uh, Outcast. No. There's a '90s band. It's not listed in here because they're probably. Not relevant. Uh, the best. I'm gonna do this one more time. Hey. Black Keys. A two-piece band would be drummer, playing drums, and a, a singer, guitarist slash bassist. So, so like you described, you would have that pedal that would be able to um, make the guitar sound like it has the low end mm -hmm. on the bass, but also you're really playing guitar. Or a, a drummer and a really good keyboardist who can play both bass lines and chords and sing at the same time, which is, describes a lot of keyboardists. So that's that. Um, Seven Nation Army. Mm -hmm. Anything more to say about that? Uh, no. Okay. 
So, all right, number five, uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. This one, I know this one. If you've never heard that song, You're Living Under a Rock, uh, utilizing the chord progression and strumming style of, most, of the most used riff in rock. Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit is a song that everyone knows and it's fun to play. It is very fun to play. Yeah. Uh, the main guitar, actually, actually it's way more fun when you have a drummer because the drummer, if, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just insane. The main guitar riff is constructed from four power chords and is played in a syncopated 16th note strum by Mr. Cobain, the recently departed, not recently. Um, according to ultimateguitar.com, Smells Like Teen Spirit has the staying power of one of the greatest guitar rock songs of all time because it offers a powerful combination of raw punk metal energy with an irresistible pop sensibility. Written by someone who loves the right words. Um, irresistible About music. pop sensibility, I think uh, that's the sort of thing that led Kurt Cobain. That's the sort of verbiage that led Kurt Cobain down his path. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Irresistible pop sensibility. Whoever wrote that caused his decline. That was like his whole crusade was against that. Killed him with that. Yeah. He, you wrote that one? No, I didn't write that one. Oh, God. That, that was... I said whoever did. Yeah. yeah, whoever did, because I, I would feel really terrible. <laughs> uh, Cobain, Cobain himself admitted that it was a cliched riff, one derivative of the guitar work in the fairly cheesy 70s arena rock anthem, more than a feeling? Yeah, in fact, um, there's yeah. some live videos of them doing that where they start out the song going. More than a feeling, more than a feeling. And then they go. Yeah. That's really interesting. I've actually never made that um, comparison I, before. Me neither before I saw that video, which was actually recently. I was like, yeah. oh. That's really interesting. Uh, the band Boston has famously More Than a Feeling is one of their most famous songs. Hey, we're still going. We're yes, still going. we are. Okay. We're still live. My thing just uh, froze. OK. That smells like Teen Spirit. Um, interestingly enough, when that song came out, my friend uh, Brian Gallagher um, who was, he used to do like, ad, uh, he used to do ads. He used to like, he was a child actor. He's in, and he had yeah. a, he tried out for a, a, um, a deodorant commercial, uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit, deodorant, who capitalized on the song at the time. And I'll never forget watching him dance. There's a long, a there's a long history of soap capitalizing, big soap capitalizing on uh, musical trends of the time. Like, yeah, really? Even going back to like the 60s, you see ads for like psychedelic soap and it's like tie dye and like it's got like, you know, the I've 60s aesthetic. It's a big soap conspiracy. Big soap conspiracy. Big bringing, soap. Bringing, yeah. bringing down the world uh, by uh, insinuating themselves or inserting themselves That's into it. insinuating themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Forget about vaccines. Soap you gotta watch out for. Yeah, because like, as soon as you wash yourself, all the the metal objects in the room will just yeah, <laughs> yeah smash right, against right, your face. Right. Have you watched those videos with the these people with the magnets on their arms? No. For the vaccine. For the vaccine. Wait, there's commercials. <laughs> Not commercial. No videos. Oh, okay. There's videos of people going like, look, oh, these magnets on me arm. It's definitely magnets in the, in the vaccine. In the British? After they get a vaccine, they put a magnet up to their skin, uh -huh. and they say that it sticks, and it's because the vaccine has all this metal in it or something. Give me a break. Maybe they should just take a shower and uh, with soap, wash off yeah. uh, whatever sticky People like you on are preventing us from moving on with our lives. Yes. It's a big soap conspiracy. conspiracy. It's all yeah, big together. soap has is, is just ruined it for everybody. Number four, Stairway to Heaven. Talking to you, Led Dove. Zeppelin. A little band. From London or Great Britain. Yeah, what can we say about this? What can we say about this, Kevin? Besides that, you teach this all the time, and I was teaching uh, my it. office is right outside your teaching room. I was teaching it yesterday. <laughs> I'll tell you what I can tell you is that the hardest part of the song, probably for a lot of beginners, is the solo. Mm. 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 Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, but my favorite part of the tune is... It's a good Really Dorian. makes me wonder. Good Dorian progression. Oh. It is a fun song to play. This guy Mike in high school gave me a, a cassette tape mm -hmm. with uh, a mix he made. He's like he had, he'd asked me on the bus ride home, "Have you ever listened to Led Zeppelin?" And I said, "No." And he said, "I'm making you a mixtape." And he did. Mm -hmm. And I listened to that thing. I mean, I wore it out. And that's when, when I first heard that song. I was like, "Whoa." Mm -hmm. Just floored. Floored. So I'm hoping that happens with my girls. You're we're listening to it on vinyl. Mixtapes? <laughs> no, but like we're listening to the song and it's, I hope it floors them. Like there's some songs that they'll listen to and they're and immediately like on this list they don't like. But right, right. I'm hoping that when we because I got Ava the Stairway to Heaven, uh, the first album. Anyway. Good. Uh, great introduction to arpeggios, this song. Yeah, so there's there's you know a, a volume of study about the chord progression in the beginning. But, a volume, but this uh, this a, vo a volume of ah. study. You know that's an A minor arpeggio, but then you go to the next chord and immediately there's like so much debate on. I call that a minor major ninth. Everybody else, they're just on the edge of their seat. Some people call it a E yeah. augmented over G sharp. Some people. Who? Um, probably not jazz guys. Uh, but this, that's, you know, that's the spy chord. Yeah. Ah, tune in next week while Mr. Hobier's villain runs away. <laughs> tune in next week for the next final thrilling adventure of Blup. Something or other. Led Zeppelin famously uh, had a copyright battle over the song. Yeah, with uh, we did a, a show about it. Yeah, we've talked. Oh, that's why I'm getting deja vu. We've done a whole episode about. Yeah, it. Yeah, but you know what? Doesn't matter. What was Final the name legal of that? challenge. What? what was the name of that band? Uh, the name of the band was uh, Millions of Dollars Spirit. of a Stake. Spirit. The front, yep, Spirit is the name of the band. Uh, the copyright yep. dispute was originally um, lodged by a journalist on behalf of the state of Randy, Ro uh, Randy Wolf, the late frontman of Spirit. They argued that Led Zeppelin became familiar with Spirit's song after the singer Robert Plant saw them live. So if you listen to the tune that they're talking about and you listen to the song, you can kind of go, okay, but it's a chord progression. Yeah, it's, uh, you can't own a chord progression. And more specifically, it's something called a line cliche, um, where it's something, it's a cliche in music to, for it to go, like think about like French folk, like. Right. Uh, that's even in Mary Poppins, chim chimini, chim chimini, chim chimini, chim chim chiri. Yeah. <laughs> It's also uh, my funny Valentine, sweet something Valentine. Yeah, so there's an army of lawyers that would argue that, or were trying to argue that this was copyright infringement. If you know what a copyright is, it's like you, you claim ownership of it. Once you claim ownership of it, like nobody can copy it. But on the, the thing is with the chord progression is like there's a million songs out there with the same chord progression. That would mean like that would make everything invalidated. The thing you can't take from somebody is the melody. Right. So they're trying to. I think they're also trying to argue that there was a melody in there that they stole. Whatever. But um, "Stairway to Heaven." Um, oh, it's in here too. Yeah. Very nice. So they, um, the ninth use, uh, the ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco has upheld the 2016 trial that verdict that found Led Zeppelin did not copy it. Good for them. Mm -hmm. That would have that would have started a very very bad precedent, I think. I was watching another video last night from another YouTube music theorist, theorist Charles Cornell. He's talking about this guy, Bill Wirtz, who, you know, uh, used that line cliche in part of his song and went into describe. No, yeah, Bill Wirtz. I know. 
uh, history of the world. Yeah. Uh, history of Japan. Yeah. Uh, and then very short videos where you just click on it and it's like, oh, hi, thanks for checking yeah. in. I'm still a piece of garbage. I love <laughs> yeah. yeah. He plays a lot of really interesting, like. Yeah, he is, he is really cool. Um, shout very, out Bill Shout out Bill Wurz. If you're watching, you're not. But um, he's totally watching. Big shout out. Uh, very inventive with his use of harmony. Stay right there. We're getting to the top three. Oh. But before we do that, um, on the, the, the copyright thing, a very famous song, which you might know, Stay With Me, Sam Smith, is a very familiar melody. Do you know what that is? Sam stay Smith stays, would you stay with me? Yeah. That is actually I Won't Back Down by Tom Petty. And Tom Petty figured it out, or somebody in Tom Petty's estate figured it out, and they, they got rights. Yeah. So listen, go do your homework right now. Listen to Stay With Me uh, by Sam Smith, very famous song, and then go listen to Tom Petty's I Won't Back Down. My daughter Ava heard it like right away. Really? Yeah, she's like, holy cow, I can't believe that. Cool. So the melody is the, is the thing, guys. You can't steal the melody. Uh, number three on this crazy list we've got here, um, Iron Man. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Iron Man by Black Sabbath. Uh, so yeah, it's one of the all-time essential elements of metal guitar, man. This is one of the this is one of the tunes, right? This is not just Iron Man the, the comic book. This is one of the most famous uh, guitar riffs of all time, according to UltimateGuitar.com. This is one of the most taught. Number three, number one of the most taught guitar. Yeah, my riffs experience with it though is, you know, while it is among the top three taught guitar songs, uh, it's deceptively tricky. Um, to play it up on, on the on the fretboard like that is a little hard. Yeah, in, to, in time. To do it like Tony Iommi did it uh, in time is 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 tricky. Well, how did tricky. he do it? Uh, uh, so the power chords. Like yeah. I just did, right? Yeah. So, but where it gets tricky is the. And then slide down without hitting, right? Yeah. yeah. Does he hit it or did? Uh, not... I always hit it. But that that slide. First of all, I mean, you know, sliding is a technique where that's a slide. You can do a precision slide like like that or yeah. which is what it is. Um, that's a technique on its own. And then sliding with two fingers. And if you don't have the callus yet, yeah, that can be very difficult. Ouch. Yeah. Um, uh, you could play it like. Two fingers there, but even that sixteenth notes, even at what is it, sixty beats per minute, can be a challenge for the beginner. Yeah, and it's tuned to standard pitch. Iomi, Tony Iomi, mm -hmm. uh, used light gauge strings, which is a little tidbit that I did not know. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's if it's eights, nines, tens. Who knows? A medium, uh, nice. really? Why? A medium <sighs> pick, and it's a great beginner introduction to metal riffing. Definitely. It's one of like one of the most famous first metalish type of songs that were very famous. So here's the thing when you know, when people talk about writing songs, this is a direct quote from uh, Tony Iommi. Tony Iommi, most of the riffs I've done have come up I've come up with on the spot. That's the thing, right? You're sitting here, you're like noodling around, you come up with something that sounds cool, and you show your friend. Mm. Seriously. And that was one of them. It, it just came up. So he was playing around. That riff came up, and then he, and then, you know, it went with the drummer and what, and what Bill was playing. I just saw this thing in my mind of someone creeping on you, and it just sounded like the riff. <laughs> in my head, I could hear it as a monster. So I, I came up with that riff there, and then. And then Tony Stark. And then Tony Stark came. No relation whatsoever. Oh. No well, relation. He's the Iron Man. He is, but. Also, Iron Giant. Famous Disney movie, mm -hmm. yeah, but not Iron Man. Right. No relation whatsoever. They I, weren't thinking movies back then. They were. Iron Man is now a Disney movie. Iron Man is Thanks. now a Disney movie. Yeah. Thanks to some uh, hostile takeovers, I'm sure. Uh, also, the Iron Man uh, competition. The Iron Man competition, but again, no relation. Big they, dudes they were lifting not, boulders. No relation though. There's he was. They were just in a room, probably 
doing things, and this riff came up, and they played, played jammed, and then Ozzy came in, oh no, everyone, and then they just played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, how I picture Ozzy everywhere. And they're like, oh, the singer's here. Let's, oh no, everyone. Let's put some structure to it, I guess. Number two on this list of 20 something. What is this list again? 20 top the Top 10 songs, the top 20 songs every guitar should know. The top 10s is what we're talking about. Number two is Wish You Were Here by my favorite, Pink Floyd. What's that background noise that the woman talking right in the beginning? <laughs> yeah, right before it starts? Oh yeah, it's the like a transistor yeah. radio. I forgot. I used to know what she said, and I forget what what it was. Um, you know, Pink Floyd they they would do that kind of soundscaping a lot, especially in Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like it's like somebody tuning through a radio and then the song. Comes and then on. all of a sudden you hear the guitar come in that right yeah. there. That's yeah, I mean. No, which is it? Which is it? Yeah, I love that part. See, that which all is it? totally escaped me. <laughs> yeah, because if you really li really listen, and that's what you you got that from a uh, little research there, Maddie. Yeah, I was well done. Lyrics. Nice. Yeah. One of which my is it? Favorite things is on Dark Side of the Moon at the end, the very end of the album. You can hear the Beatles recording in the studio next to them. Oh. At the very end. Yeah, yeah, that's a factoid. Yeah. Um, there's no Dark Side of the Moon really. In fact, it's all dark. Yeah. But on this song, um, that's a little a tidbit there, but. That guitar riff, probably one of the most famous of all time. Uh, uh, yeah, this this is probably more famous, but my I like I like the other guitar. Love that. It's my favorite part. There it is. And then back to the G chord. Roger Waters comes in. Um, yeah, the song crackles and pops in the beginning, and that that whole part's uh, you know comes in. So the second, the, according to UltimateGuitar.com, the second guitar is loud and blemish free. So like the first got that crackly sound, right. and the second guitar comes in. This is all production, guys. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, but it's like a really uh, stark change in texture that I think um, sticks out to the listener in a very profound way. If you want to do your research, as a young man, uh, Sid Barrett is one of, part of uh, Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. So by 1975, um, he'd become a, a pale shadow of his former self. So, so you know, Wish You Were Here, the album is based on, um, yeah, it's on Sid Barrett, Shout Out and Crazy you know Diamond. about that? How he was the founding member and he he did so much acid it fried his brain. Yeah, he did bad things and he just he just just messed them up totally. Yeah, wish and wish you were here is like on a like a like a mental level. Like yeah, wish you were still. He was like the founding member. He was like the artistic visionary of the band, mm -hmm. and they saved it. They salvaged it with the you know the, the other founding members, but mm -hmm. it, it went into a totally different direction. If you listen to like Omagama and like all the albums prior, mm -hmm. like. <laughs> it's really out there. I've gotten into fights with friends about that, actually. Which which, which is better, pre uh, Wish You Were Here or post? You got Piper at the Gates of Metal, all dawn. that stuff. Uh, I don't know. It's tough. It depends on where, like, what kind of music you like, like to listen to. Their biggest success was Dark Side. Yeah. That's what I'll yep, say. Yep. Players on Ultimate Guitar uh, have noted here that it has a little bit of everything. It isn't too hard, a little bit of picking, some chord changes, and a solo that isn't too hard to learn. It's really one of the most perfect songs to learn on a guitar. You should be learning it, which brings us to number one. So as we started here, uh, May 26, according to my research, 1973, uh, Deep Purple's single, Smoke on the Water, was released. Oh. Mm -hmm. And because of that single, millions of millions and millions of guitar teachers around the world taught that dang song every day for the rest of their lives. Millions of millions of times. Uh, uh, yeah, Smoke on the Water, number one, probably one of the most teachable and memorable songs that any guitarist can learn from Deep Purple. Yeah, uh, it's, and, you know, rightfully so. It's a relatively simple lick, but it's uh, effective and yeah. it's recognizable and. Um, 
You know, it, 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 it builds, it's like a good study in like how like a song can like build in textures because it starts out with the, just the guitar. And then the hi-hat, I think, comes in. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. And then the bass comes in after that. Nice. Um, yeah, I always uh, had become very tired of teaching that song. <laughs> Schmack in the water. Yeah, I've just too many, too but many times. But. Here's here's the cool thing, right? What is it? Um, so I've taught that song so many times. You know, I can do it in my sleep. Uh, but now you were just playing the bass line and the riff at the same time, my it, friend. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. You know. uh, but but now with practice pad, I'm able to in just a couple clicks send it to my students. What is practice pad, Kevin? I'm so glad you asked. Practice pad is a learning environment where real brave instructors such as myself and many more are. Uh, able to upload notes, uh, pictures, personalized tutorials, uh, skill modules where we can track their progress and, and so cool. uh, students can upload response videos. It's really cool, really cool thing. So uh, we've done now, uh, so we're, we're working on this thing of, of this idea of custom skills where each instructor is you know, able to, for each student and whatever song they're learning, uh, input the song. Mm -hmm. or input their version of how they teach this song, right? Yep. So for Smoke on the Water, I've now used it like a bunch of times. But I go in there, I create the uh, default video, um, I write out the tabs, I take a picture, I post it up there. Um, the student then takes that, what I assigned for them that week, they see it in their profile when they're at home, and then they go in there and they upload response videos. Um, Love it. And I can, up, I can put in a note every week too to say, like, hey, focus on this. Hey, great job here. Now try it with one finger or whatever it is. You can also link the YouTube videos as well for whatever song they're working on or any other you know, YouTube resources out there. Um, I like to use backing tracks or like drum tracks or stuff like that to help uh, improve a student's uh, time and rhythm. Um, but I'm watching it right here. We got a little video up there showing uh, Practice Pad in action. And we're, we're doing this on purpose because one of the songs that you can teach in there and learn is, is Practice Pad. But the teachers teach it, they have their own version of Smoke it. Smoke on the Water. Smoke on the Water. Yeah. Practice right. Pad is the song. In practice and of Pad itself. is the song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Practice Pad. It's a pad symphony is a song. of technological feats. They pay me a lot of money to sit here <laughs> and misspeak. Um, yeah, it's 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 one of now many songs that are in my personal arsenal of songs I've taught in practice pad since we put that update in there, and um, you know it's, it's growing every day. And every day I find myself all oh, day. We've, we've done that before. All oh, day. We've done this <laughs> tune before. I've I've taught this tune before. Let me see if it's here. It is. Here's twenty five or six to four. And then everything that I've taught on that is right there. Not to go off on a tangent though, so like, are you able to, the old day, be able to do. Old day? Old day. Old day. Old day. Are you able to like start 25, 64, 78, 92 hike, right? That tune? Mm -hmm. Just a riff. And then go back to it the week after and like do a little bit more? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's kind of uh, cool. So for every like skill that I've created, for each student can be personalized. Yeah. And can be improved upon. And then I can decide, like, oh, okay, I really like this, and I can use it in future uses and fu future uses, and with a couple clicks, cool. have it be like saved and, and solidified. Act now, I get a whole year of practice pad for free. Yeah, or not really for free, but uh, <laughs> but check us out at uh, uh, practice-pad.com or realbraveaudio.com and uh, click for a free lesson. Yeah, you can get a free lesson, sure. Uh, Thank you for that, um, that that video that you put together, Kevin. That's uh, it's mighty kind of you. I mean, I saw we were. I all I saw was in the email about this broadcast was "Deep Purple Smoke on the Water" was released May 26, <laughs> 1973, and then a link, and I was like, "All right, I'll click the link later." And I never clicked it, so I just assumed we were talking about "Smoke on the Water" the whole time for 45 minutes. You know, which we could very well have, um, but it's, it's in G. Since uh, it's in G. <laughs> oh, here's how "Smoke on the Water" would sound like if it was in major, though. Yeah, bow, bow. <laughs> Smoke off the water. Smoke off the water. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Light mist off the water. A light mist. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, uh, so Richie Blackmore um, for the riff, I was playing two notes at the same time, starting with, again, goes back to what I was talking about. They're not, it's not like you're sitting in a room and like you're composing from like some deep place at times. For the riff, I was playing two notes at the same time, starting with G on top of D below, and I played that with my thumb and first finger, not with a pick. The, the riff then moved along using the same spread between the two notes. You just mess around, guys. Um, you can do it too. This is such a popular tune that uh, in our most recent TikTok concert, we had two students submit for this one. Schmack in the water. One of them did it in E, actually. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the other one did it in the standard tuning. Um, I wonder if anyone on this round is going to also submit Smoke on the Water. I'm sure. It's we'll like I've heard. Uh, what, what songs are, are missing off this list? Oh. So many. Great question. And then we'll. we'll Viewers should comment below. Yeah, please, com think we've missed please um, comment below on the songs that you Thank you, Maddie. On any of the songs you think are missing, please comment below and also tell me uh, how good I look today. Thank maybe, you. Maybe Blackbird and So So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Blackbird, I think I've taught like a bunch of times. That's um, a good one. It is a guitar. It is like a the acoustic guitar song. Any Jimi Hendrix song, right? Oh, geez, any Jimi Hendrix song, which is what I was trying to do before. <laughs> or even. Creep wasn't on the list. Creep by um, TLC. TLC. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised too. Creep by Radiohead, their most hated song. Um, yeah, even Tom York hates that song because yeah. of that how that is how often it's done. But that is yeah another That's very another, common yeah because it's, it's a it's a picking song. You can use your your bar chords. My life has changed when um, during the chorus, so it changed my life. Yeah, that thing changed my life, hundred percent. Um, what was I just thinking? Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Oh, what about um, uh, off in uh, uh, Santeria? I forget how it goes. Sublime? Uh, yeah. I forget how it goes. Uh. But then another one, Sweater, something about a sweater. Oh, the Sweater song by Weezer. That's the one. Yep. And Weezer. Say it ain't so, Say, all, Pretty much everything from the Blue Album on from Weezer. Yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. Buddy Holly. Uh, Green Day, right? Oh, we did we did do a Green Day song? Right? Yeah, but uh, I think. American Idiot is pretty iconic. Uh, yeah, the uh, something like that. Something like that. There's so many. There's too many songs. Yeah. There's no uh, Van Halen on here. There's no. <laughs> many. There's like, no like Metallica, right? No, no. there's one. There's uh, one Metallica. Enter Sandman. Sand man. Um. Yeah, there's 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 a there's plenty. This this list could be extended to a top fifty and, and include a lot more. And we could no spend all day. There no was, fish songs. There was no fish songs, much to my dismay. Yeah. But not surprise. Uh, <laughs> I mean, everybody's happy about that. Um, but that being said, I've taught many of fish song, and I have uh, now a bunch of custom skills and practice pads. That is not the real brave way. Uh, well, we listen to the student, and then we give them a customized tutorial. Paul, big fish fan. Big fish fan. Brian, Brian big fish fan. I can get you another fish fan. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll take him. I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to get him over here. Take him on. He lives up the block from me. Okay. Oh, I know the guy who you're talking about. Huge. Him and his wife actually. Wasn't he at the uh, the El Poa yes. ball? Yeah, <laughs> the El Poa ball. The, uh, yeah, the uh, they call it the uh, the prom. Right. Yeah, the prom. <laughs> the, the the adult prom. <laughs> I hope they do it again this year because uh, I need something normal in my life. Uh, Kevin, that was the top uh, ten. Songs every guitarist should know. Um, do we have anything else to add before we bid adieu? Um, Back to work. Just uh, b say no, guys. J just say no to Back in Black. Back in Black. <laughs> no, actually, um, uh, <laughs> that's another one. Yeah. But just saying. But I have nothing else to add. Though. Nothing else to add. Folks, we uh, actually did talk about practice pads today. So practice pad makes it easy to learn any instrument with an instructor. Plus, we built a video room in there so you don't have to go to Zoom. What's Zoom? Um, Zoom who? It's, it's really cool. It's fun. It's at practice-pad.com. It's affordable, too. You can meet with an instructor weekly. And Real Brave is a music school. 
We do have three locations uh, in the New York, New Jersey area, and we're really nice people. I mean, just pop in, say hi, here's a high five, because we can do that now. We're allowed to touch each other again. Uh, that should be the, the slogan for 20, the, the 2022 midterm elections. We can touch each other we again. We can touch each other again. Uh, that's all for us here at, um, at Real Brave. Um, please follow us at Real Brave Inc. on all the platforms, TikTok, Instagram, here on Facebook. And um, that's it, practice-pad.com. We'll see you very soon. Please comment below on the favorite thing you saw today from us here at Real Brave. And we'll see you next week, Wednesday. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Real Brave Live. Thanks, guys. <laughs>